Thank you, Rosa Bay Hat. And it's this Thursday, 10 to 2. So if you guys want to help out, come on down here. Um, also, um, we have Women of the Valley Saturday. Woo! That's exciting. 10 o'clock, right? Yes, ma'am. Yes. So remember that. So let's just close our eyes and invite the Lord into this house today. Father God, we give you glory and honor, God, that this is your house, God, and we come to worship you, God. We come to bring you glory, God. It's all for you, Jesus. We drop ourselves to get filled up with you this morning, Father. I pray for a fire, God, this morning. I pray for revival this morning, Father God. I pray that we get excited to be in your house, Jesus. Come on. We give you praise and honor and glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Are you guys ready to worship?
voice is going to be the music of the song. Come on. Come on, just begin to worship. Open your mouth. Begin to praise him. Come on, we lift you up, Jesus. Glory to the Most High God. Come on, he's a good, good father. Come on, we sing hallelujah. Come on. Somebody worship him right now. Somebody worship God. Come on, somebody worship God. Glory to the Most High God. Let this place erupt. Come on. Glory to God. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. He brought us so far. He brought us so far.
If, if you were to have to write down how you've changed, did you do that? I'm not going to have you do that. I just was wondering if it's a recognizable change to you. Or do you feel the same and you just want things to get back? Huh? I mean, because I don't think that... Uh, I've been studying this for a while, and I've been thinking about the, the launch of the attack, not just on humanity, but against the church itself. Amen? Amen. Are you hearing me? Yeah. Uh, in fact, if you really, if you, I think if you really begin to research it, uh, research it, and, and, and I have most of the people I, have, I talk to, ministers, agree with me that uh, most of this has come about, and there is a, there is a, there is a target. Amen? There's a target of the enemy. Are you hearing me? And the Bible says that, that the enemy roams, roams to and fro, seeking whom he may devour. Right? He roams to and fro throughout the whole earth, seeking whom he may devour. And then the next part B of that scripture is, whom are steadfast in the faith. Hello? Yeah. So it don't make no sense for everybody to think, well, the devil's just after the world, but the devil's already got the world. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But I believe that there is, uh, I believe that, 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 that the enemy is trying to stop the progression of the church yes. and revival that is getting ready. The last day revival. Amen. 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 This last day revival is going to change life. Your loved ones, your, set, your, your families and your children and your grandchildren and your mothers and fathers and neighbors and cousins and brothers and, uh, that are going to dedicate their lives to the Lord, the enemy is trying to stop that. Yeah. Amen. 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 And he's trying to quench the, the fire of the church because I don't know about you, but there's there's been a consistent revival Bef that, that was happening before all this happened, that the church was growing, the church in general, I'm not talking about just this church, but the church was growing, people were getting saved, I've been seeing people come back to the Lord, yeah. <clears throat> amen, people that have walked afar off, that have come back to their, maybe maybe they weren't, you know, if, if you don't, if you have a problem with the word backslidden, that's on you, but maybe they were just walking afar off, maybe they were backslidden, maybe they had drawn back, maybe they had slowed down, lost their zeal, forgot their first love. Right. Amen. But I've been seeing a consistency in people that are coming back. Amen. To their walk with God. I've, I've talked to people, people watching us via live and on YouTube. Uh, people that I thought, man, I people that I'd forgot about, actually. There's people that had, had walked away from the Lord, and I'm just like, I, they weren't like in my mind anymore. And then all of a sudden, I'm like, can you believe that? Can you believe that? They're serving the Lord again, man. They're, 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 they're praising God. And worshiping. Amen. Amen. People, people that are, uh, hello? Yes. People you lost, lost touch with, people you haven't seen in a while, and now you see, I mean, like people that, I, I found out there's all kinds of people that I went to school with that are serving the Lord, that are saved, sold out, committed to the work of the Lord, yes. right, faithful to their church, their local church. Are you hearing me? Yes. Because I believe that there's a, there's, there's, there was a drawing for these, the last day revival, and the enemy is doing everything he can to stop it. Amen? Amen. And I started praying about that, and then I started thinking about like how all things work together for good to them that love God for the call according to his purpose, right? And that uh, I see the enemy thinks he launches he launches a lot of things. You know, the enemy tries to launch these things, and, and, and then all of a sudden it turns out for a good thing. So in the end, the enemy thought he did something, but really God did something. Are you hearing me? Does that make sense? Right? Like somebody, like, 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 it'd be like if you had this, if you had something that, it's like if you had a, if you took a bunch of poison ivy and put it in a, in a, in a, in a suitcase, painted it gold, and then somebody stole it. When they opened it, right, they thought they was getting something good and it turned out to be something terrible. Well, that's how it is with the enemy. When he thinks he opens up something good for him, yeah. and, and, and he opens it up, and all of a sudden he finds out that the Holy Spirit's inside there. Amen. 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 He finds out the power of God. Right? Yeah. It's like, like, uh, like Carmen, that song Carmen used to sing about the, and, and the, they were talking, when they were crucifying Christ, and they, the enemy said, I've won, I've won, I've won. He's dead, he's dead, he's dead. And all of a sudden, God started, the, 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 it started counting backwards, 10, yeah. Yeah. 9, 8, yeah. 7, right? And all of a sudden Christ, 
Yeah, he is risen. He rose up. The enemy thought he killed him. Yeah. He rose up. So right now the enemy thought he's done something. Right. Amen. Yeah. What he's done is he's empowered us. Yeah. Yes. Amen. Yeah. That's right. And, and I don't know about you, but I'm going to talk a little bit about change today. Might not feel good, right? I hope it feels good because uh, every time God does something in my life that has to do with change, it, it feels good to me. Amen. Hey, children are dismissed to Children's Church. I'm sorry I kept you guys standing. Uh, amen. But, uh, when we were young in the Lord, man, we used to go, we'd stand through the whole service sometimes. Y'all need to get excited. You can be seated. Praise God. Give the Lord some praise. And I think we're going to welcome our Pastor Matt platform this morning. Praise God. Yay, two people. Oh, Only two people like you. That's everybody's favorite part of service. Yeah. Hey, if you guys, if you guys need an envelope, go ahead and raise your hands. That's just a good one too. Yeah. I feel the same way sometimes. Please don't make me go. How's everybody doing? Blessed. That wasn't very convincing. Well, blessed. Blessed. How are you guys doing? Blessed. Yeah, good. Can I read you guys a scripture? In uh, 1 Chronicles 29, uh, David is, is praying to the Lord. In 14, he says, but who am I and who are my people that we could give anything to you? Everything we have has come from you, and we give to you only what you first gave us. Amen? Yes. Is God your God? Yes. Is he your Jehovah Jireh? Yes. He's your, he's your provider? Yes. Amen. So why is it so hard to give something? Right. Right? Are you afraid you're not going to get it back? Are afraid you're not going to get something better? Ten times better. Right? Everything that he, everything that we have already, he's your, you just said he was your provider, right? Wow. Everything wow. that he, that you have, he's already given you, yes. right? Yes. Come on. So, so when we give something, why are we afraid? Is it like human nature? Is it flesh? Is it greedy, stingy, right. selfish? Right? We don't want to give it up. Right. Well, if God's your provider, he gave it to you. Why is it so hard to give it up? You know he's going to replace it, Amen. right? Right? Amen. 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 He's your provider, right? Yeah. It shouldn't be that hard to give something up. Right? It shouldn't be that hard to give. Because right. God is going to give back. Amen. Amen. That's good. That's good. Come on. Praise. Everything we have is from Him, right? Yes, sir. Right. Gave His yes. Son. Gave His Son for us, right? Mm -hmm. Would you give your son? Come on. Jacob, Jacob you're going to already have a son, right? Would you give up that baby for Mike? Can you imagine? <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
just kidding. Yes. Yeah. Your mic's not on. I'm just kidding. Um, this morning, we have a special, he's turning it on right now. Um, I'm just waiting. And I'm just going to act like I'm just, it's on, so. My voice is loud enough, right? Um, my special youth, Zoe, and we are going to sing a worship song. Oh, yeah.
How many have been doing the things they don't want to do? Right? Amen? I ain't talking about the bad things. Right? Like Paul said, things I want to do, I don't do, and the things I end up doing, I didn't want to do in the first place. If it's anything like me, uh, you know, those things can be reversed in any way. I mean, like, uh, sometimes you are wanting to do something for yourself, but God might require you to do something for someone else. There's times when you might want to relax and not do anything, and God requires you to pray. Amen? There's times when you might not feel like uh, giving, but you need to give. There's times you might not feel like going, but you need to go. Are you hearing me? If we don't learn self-denial, right? If we don't learn to, to, uh, to allow ourselves to be available, that's part of Christianity that a lot of people miss out on is that we have to continue to be trainable, teachable, usable, yeah. available. Amen? Yeah. Sometimes we become comfor comfortable in our Christianity. And I can tell you this, that uh, I've had to deal with myself over and over and over again under the unction of the Holy Spirit. God's not going to force something on you. He will force things to where you will wake up and smell the coffee, but he's, he's not going to make you, grab you by the neck, and make you be obedient. You have to yield yourself to the Spirit of the Lord. You have to, you have to make yourself sometimes be obedient to the Lord. The Bible says obedience is better than sacrifice. And I, I don't know about you, but I've been working on myself to get to the place to where I, I walk in obedience rather than everything in my Christianity being a sacrifice. You know, sacrifice unto the Lord can be a good thing, but obedience is better. And shouldn't we give God our best? I don't think that we should be grudgingly people. I don't, you know, the Bible says when we give, we should be hilarious givers. You know, we should be cheerful givers. We should be, you know, and, and I'm a true believer. You know, I really believe. So I believe like when Matt receives the tithe and offering, I believe what the Bible says that that if we are faithful in our tithe and offering, that God will rebuke the devourer for our sakes. You know, I get calls of people that need this and people that need that, and we go into prayer, and and uh, and I'm thinking sometimes I'm thinking like, you know, if you was just faithful, right, you wouldn't have the devourer pouncing on your head all the time, right? Uh, I've recently had people call me up and say, you know, I had somebody call me just recently. I won't, and it was wasn't somebody I know, but somebody who goes to this church knows them, and they called me up and they said, is this Pastor Ron Taylor? But yes, it is. And they go, uh, you know, I've been really going through and really struggling, and I think I have a demon. I go, well, you don't. Yeah. And they go, well, how do you know? I go, because you'd never call me. Come on. Uh, I go, you, you probably have one troubling you. Yeah. Hello? Come on. You have one troubling you, and I'll pray with you about that. But there, you don't have a demon. Amen. Don't. That's the kind of walk we need to have. We need to have the confidence in who we are in the Lord, and that only comes when we're obedient in every area. My insecurities in my life, in my walk, in my Christianity, is because I know that there's areas I've been disobedient in. There's areas that I'm not uh, that I'm not allowing to change. And I can tell you that over the past few months in this quarantine and this virus, and it got me to thinking about change. It got me to thinking about how long. We go on in our walk with God, uh, and I'm not saying that anybody's lukewarm. I ain't saying people aren't saved. I ain't saying that people aren't doing good. I'm just saying, are we doing our best? Right? I mean, enter in my good and faithful servant, not my half-assed servant. Right? Oh, did I say that on TV? And I said half-fast. F-A-S-T. What did you guys think? <laughs> Filthy minds. <laughs> Filthy minds. That's right. Uh, you know, I mean, we, 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 if we really knew and had tasted and seen how good the Lord is, yes, then it would drive us to complete, uh, to, 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 to maybe not complete, but to uh, try to mature in areas of our lives. Right. And it's amazing to me how long people will stay immature in the Lord. And then, uh, and you can almost tell that by when you say you're very insecure in the Lord and they get offended, right? Because when my bishop tells me, you know, that's insecure, I'm like, you're right. 
I need to change. I need to work on that. Can you help me? <laughs> like you see, I'm helping you right now. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. By telling you and identifying you. So I think that, you know, part of change uh, comes through knowledge and education and prayer, uh, spending time uh, with the word uh, and, and worship and allowing the spirit of the Lord to really deal with you. Because I don't know about you, but I want conviction yeah. in my life. Amen. I want conviction in my life. I don't ever want to get to the place where I'm just running them up with my life and things are okay. Because I know that everything that I do has a harvest. I know that every seed I sow has a harvest. And if you don't know that, then you don't know your Bible. With what measure ye measure, it will be measured back to you. The Bible says that if you judge, you'll be judged. That if you plant a seed, you're going to reap a harvest. And that makes sense in every area. Because in the book of Genesis, every seed beareth fruit of itself. So we, cre we recreate ourselves. We recreate our environments. We recreate our financial uh, condition over and over and over again. I mean, you can really look at it in culture and society and even in our own lives. I mean, like, I'm not trying to step on any of you, but I mean, how many of you have been involved in bad relationships? Yeah. Anybody? Yeah. How many of you have been involved in bad relationships over and over again? Right? Yeah. That proves my point. We do the same things over and over and over again. And it's, it's amazing because a lot of those things hurt us, right? I mean, like, anybody here ever been burned? Yeah. Okay, let me tell you how smart I am. So I bought my grandson a, a, a wood-burning kit. You know what a wood-burning kit is? Yeah. Okay, a wood-burning kit. So it, it's, it's, you know, I buy them little things once in a while, different, just different ones. I just see something, I pick it up at a yard sale or at a, you know, whatever, a stone polishing kit or something, or maybe a, a pit, you know, I might just get them something. Who knows? Just something. And so I was going to try it out first just to make sure it all worked and all that. So I set it down. I got it hot. And I started working with it. And then I unplugged it. And then I go, I wonder how hot it really gets. <laughs> <laughs> this fast. Singed my finger. I'm like, it burns wood. <laughs> It burns wood. <laughs> Obviously, it's going to burn my finger. Yeah. Right? And I knew it was hot, but yet I still touched it. And after I did it, it's like the Holy Spirit said, see? You already knew it was bad. You already knew it was going to burn you. You didn't even put spit on your finger. <laughs> I glitched. Like, and we do things like that in our lives over and over and over again. We involve ourselves in circumstances and situations and life trials and, you know, and, and, and we end up doing the same things. Anybody ever lost a job? I lost many a job because I thought I knew better than the boss. Like, well, this is easier. He's like, well, I didn't tell you to do it that way. I know this is the easiest way to do it. And then you get in trouble when you say, well, this is a better way. Right? It's like, he didn't, I didn't hire you to do it a better way. I hired you to do it this way. Yeah. Right? And it's, like, and, and it's like, you know, I don't know when to shut up. I don't know when I was. Well, your way's stupid. It's like, <laughs> well, my way's stupid, and that's where I'm the boss. And you don't have a job here anymore. <laughs> right? And then we get offended. Like, I can't believe that stupid boss. He's a jerk. Yes. Well, you're the one that wasn't doing what was right. You're the one that wasn't doing what you were supposed to be told. You're the one that can't learn obedience. You're the one that can't keep your mouth shut. You're the one, right? Christianity is about being humble, about being humbled, and about humility. It's, it's the opposite of pride. You know, we, we have a lot of pride in this nation, a lot of pride, a lot of pride in this room right now. You know, we got we, we got pride now. Now, now let me let me tell you something. Anybody proud of their children? Always. Yeah. Amen. That's a good thing. Right? The pride that puff us, puffs us up and makes us think of that you're, we're more than what we really should be thinking about ourselves or that, you know, and that we, we, we are, you know, I mean, it, the truth of the matter is, is that when you look at life and you look at the circumstances, 
We all need to see it as their Goliath, except for the grace of God, God keepeth me. Yeah. So I want you to turn your Bibles with me over to the book of Hebrews chapter 12. And I'm going to be talking a little bit about a man, uh, just a little bit. I'm going to give you a little scenario about a man. Um, his name was Esau. And he was a, he was a twin. Amen? And so the Bible says in the book of Hebrews chapter 12, verse 11. Now no chastening for the present seemeth to be joyous. In other words, we don't like being chastened. We don't like being uh, spanked or corrected. We don't like it. We don't like instruction. We don't like it. It doesn't seem like it's fun. It's not fun. Anybody know it's not fun to get a spanking? Yeah. Right? It's not fun. But it's grievous. Anybody ever get in trouble? It's grievous. Like it hurts your feelings, hurts your, you know, hurts your pride, sometimes hurts your behind, or, or it just hurts. You know, when somebody loves you, they can hurt you. And, and or, you can, or, or you can, you know, you spank your kids, you know, and, and they don't know that it hurts you sometimes as much as it hurts them. Never really hurt me. I used to tell them, I like it. <laughs> Why you spank us? I like it. I don't do things wrong. My dad never, my dad, my dad spanked me, man. He never said, this is going to hurt me worse than it's going to hurt you. Because he used to say, this is going to hurt you. <laughs> right? If they think that, you know, if they think they can play on your emotions, they're brilliant little monsters. <laughs> they will. You got to tell them right away. It's like, no, daddy wants, mama won't spank you. She don't like doing it. No, she likes doing it. She's going to spank you. You get to spank you. Get the woman. That's it. <laughs> So, uh, grievous. Nevertheless, afterward, everybody say afterward. afterward. So, chastising for the present time, uh, you can't find any joy in it. But you, you find pain in it, grievous. Nevertheless, afterward, it yields the peaceable fruit of righteousness unto them which are exercised thereby. Right. In other words, if it worked... Amen? Yeah. You guys can be seated. I'm going to continue reading. If it worked. Are you listening? If it worked. You can find peace in it. Some of you can't find any peace because what God has allowed you to go through, done to you, and chastising that you have been through hasn't worked. So you can't find any peace in it. So wherefore lift up the hands which hang down and... The feeble knees. And make straight paths for your feet. Lest that which is lame be turned out of the way. But let it rather be healed. Follow peace with all men. And holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. Looking diligently lest any man fail of the grace of God. Lest any root of bitterness springeth up. Trouble you. And thereby make many defiled. Anybody ever, anybody ever get bitter about something? You ever allow something to get bitter? I know people that have held on to a message of rebuke for a year. And a year later, they were still bitter, and they had griped and complained. They had went to people in the church complaining about this message, complaining about how they felt or what it made them feel or what they think about or how they feel about somebody, trying to get somebody on their side because they had a root of bitterness. I don't like the way they handle the camera. That camera costs a lot of money. And the way they handle it, I don't really like it. I don't, and it springs up, and they get bitter, and they start looking for things. And they try to get people on their side. Beware lest the root of bitterness springs up and defiles many. Chastisement will cause that. When I was little and I, me and my brother get a spanking, we'd come, we'd run out of, we'd, oh, I don't like that, I don't like that. I don't, I don't like mom, I don't like dad. Right? We say other words, but my mom heard it, we got whooped even harder. I was never allowed to say anything like, I hate you. Right? The next thing I'll be saying is, where's my tea? <laughs> Am I right, Mom? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. I couldn't say nothing like that. My mom would be making, you hate me now? You hate me? You better, you, no, I love you, Mom. I love you. I love you. Exactly. 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 She's going to beat the love into me. Yes. Now, I didn't get beat. Yes. I got chastised. Look how wonderful you turned out. 
Well, I'm not wonderful. <laughs> I Amen? would say you are. I'm not wonderful, but but I, right? huh? Right? Yeah, sure. Well, yes, you are. You well, great. Y'all don't know me as good as you think. You do. <laughs> God's still working on me. <laughs> there, that's my wife. There's a side of me. Yeah, yeah. She knows me pretty good. Uh, follow peace with all men in holiness, without which no man shall see the Lord. Looking diligently, lest any man fail. Of the grace of God, lest any root of bitterness springeth up trouble you, and thereby defile many. Lest there be any fornication or profane person as Esau, who for one morsel of meat sold his birthright. For one morsel of meat. You, all, you guys ever read the story? Yes. For one morsel of meat. Now 17 says, For ye know how that afterward... When he would have inherited the blessing, he was rejected, for he found no place of repentance, though he sought it carefully with many tears, because he had already sold it. Yeah. He was reaping the harvest. Mm -hmm. Let me say to you, I totally know that we have all gone through some drastic changes in our lives in the last few months on an outward way. I know that, and, 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 and I, I know that that uh, your maybe you, you know maybe your phone numbers change, your addresses change. Maybe you can't go to your favorite restaurant. Maybe you can't buy the clothes you normally would want to wear. Maybe the shops that you used to go to are closed. Are you hearing me? Maybe there's been a lot of change. Maybe maybe there's been a lot of outward change. Maybe you've uh, you know maybe your friends have changed. You can't hang around who you used to hang around. I mean, we've seen a complete metamorphosis in our in our country, uh, and it's and, and it's headed in and it's headed through a lot more. Yeah. It really is. It's headed through a lot more. But did you actually do any changing? Like, did you actually do any changing? I mean, like, did you? I'm around a lot of you, and I'm I'm, I'm asking you a question. Did you actually do any changing? And in that change, can you identify what God has done in you through this trying time? Because see, when I can tell you that though the enemy is the author of sickness and disease and poverty and pain, I can tell you that God will use those things. I can tell you, are you hearing me, that God will get involved in our lives. And when these things are happening, God's spirit will come upon the scene and tell us exactly what to do during this time. I mean, do you think that God didn't know all this was going to happen? Do you think that it was a surprise? It's, oh my God, what is he bringing out now? <laughs> COVID-19, what am I going to do? <laughs> right? We're talking about God. The author and finisher of all things. The creator. He created Satan. He knows exactly what Satan is doing, when he's going to do it, how he's going to do it. And I believe that all things work together for good. And I believe that if God allowed it, God has a purpose for it. Right. Yeah. Amen. I believe that there's a purpose in it that can be found by the children of God. And I believe that if we will look within ourselves and quit expecting everyone else to be different, start expecting us to be different. Amen. Yes. Amen. I like that old cliche. When you point your finger, you got three more pointing right back at you. I mean, you can change your phone number, address, even your name, but did you actually do any changing in your spirit, in your soul? I mean, we've seen complete change all around us, but just because everything around us has changed doesn't mean that you have. Amen? You have. I mean, how do you really? Well, I don't do. No, no, no. I'm not talking about what you don't do. Have you changed? I mean, have you, have you, have you? Strengthened your relationship with Christ or has have you gone astray? Have you huh? Are you more obedient or are you well I haven't been to church in months? I mean are you less obedient? I mean like you know they 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 the 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 government and the devil are not dummies. And I'm talking about the government that is manipulated by wickedness in high places. They're not dummies when when and, and, and they get manipulated by Satan. I love what Matt said about some of these people in politics. He goes, I go, man, they, they, they talk exactly alike. And he goes, they got the same devils. I'm like, 
Hello. How come I didn't think that? I mean, I know that they're tormented and tortured and uh, oppressed and possessed and used. And they, I know that they believe in a lot of what they think is right. But this is the only thing right. The word of God. You understand that? If you don't stand on that, you're in trouble and you're going to be in more trouble. If you don't base your life on the word of God, on the truth of God, if you don't start changing and metamorphing into living out this truth, the world is only going to get better. And if you know the Bible, while you think that everything is just okay and hunky-dory and it's just for a season, if you know the Bible, the world is going to get worse and the church is supposed to get stronger. Amen. We're going to get better. Amen? Amen. We're going to become more focused. We're going to become more powerful under the unction and the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our words are going to carry such power that lives are going to be delivered and set free. Boom. Immediately. That's why I know devils don't call me on the phone. They might call me in my sleep and try to wake me up. I'll, I'll click the nose. The snoo. Turn it off. Amen. I don't know about you, but when I get calls at 2 or 3 in the morning, it's not a good thing. I jump up and look at the phone and go, oh, God. Right now. I'm reading Hebrews 12, and that's no coincidence that that was written right after the faith chapter. Right? Chapter 11. I mean, no chastening for the present seemeth to be a good thing. See, I, I would rather look at situations and say, you know, that if I'm going through a trial, I'm going to give God the glory. Right? My bishop and first lady have four powerful men of God as sons. They had a fifth. And uh, he was full term. And uh, don't get concerned, ladies. Y'all are having your babies. Just listen. Thank you. And uh, he was full term. And her body produced something and it poisoned the baby. She, her blood... She, they, she had the doctor said, "Well, you were, you were never supposed to be able to have kids, and she has four, yeah, right? right? Yeah. So because her blood, her blood, like when she gets pregnant, her blood uh, does something. You guys understand that? Yeah. Yes. I don't understand that. Was it? The yeah, something. Yeah. It does something. So she was never supposed to be able to have kids. Yet she has four strong men of God." And, and uh, she had a fifth. And so I went into the room and I'm feeling, you know, I'm being me. And I'm like, I love them. You know, they're uh, Mark Filkey is my closest friend, uh, my, like a brother to me. We grew up together. And Jordana is my, we've been friends since we were little kids. And I went in there, and, you know, I'm just being the man of faith and power. And I'm like, you know what? The devil's a liar. She goes, look at me, Ron. I look at her. She goes, don't give the devil no credit. She goes, the devil can't take any lives. She goes, don't you? She goes, listen, God knows exactly what he's doing. And I'm like, I've never seen such faith. I'm just like, I would have been suicidal or something or off my rocker or whatever. You know what I'm saying? And she just looked at me. She said, we're not giving the devil no credit. All right. We're giving God all the glory. We don't know why this happened, but we know this. God is in control. And, and, and listen, that soul is going to be in heaven when I get there. And that, I'm, amen. Amen. So it, 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 I learned something from that, and I was that let's let's don't give the enemy so much credit, amen. Let's recognize what God is doing. I mean, like we know what the devil's doing. Let's recognize what God is doing. I mean, it's much better to recognize what God is doing than what the devil's doing. Come on, man. Are you hearing me? Yeah. It's like when somebody comes along and says he, he's burning down the building. Say, well, let me tell you something. God's going to give you some marshmallows. Yeah. So you, can help. <laughs> so you can make some more. Sound crazy, right? So let me, let, let me say to you that God doesn't allow us to go through anything where he doesn't have purpose for change. Amen. And I mean that we are definitely people of habit, yet we are always trying to change something around us rather than in us. So from our hair to our clothing, and you guys know what I'm talking about, right? I don't like my fingernails. Right? Oh, you ladies, you get your fingernails? Yes. Now, my fingernails get ripped off about every day when I'm out there on the tractor and pulling something off a horse's back or something, right? Always trying to change something, our eating habits. Man, I'm on a diet every Monday. Yeah. Right? 
Last week's keto, this week is low fat. Combination. Right? You know what? You know what? You know what? I was talking to the Lord like, Lord, you know, I go on keto and I lose 10 pounds and I gain it back. Then I go low fat and I lose 10 pounds. He goes, you know what? You ever heard the word discipline? I'm like, you ever heard Jerry Garcia? <laughs> right? That's ice cream if you guys want to know. So, discipline, man. That's what works. Diets don't work. The word diet has die in it. D-I-E. Die. Okay. We are programmed not to die. Okay. So, I mean, we're definitely people of habit, yet... From, from, from our hair to our clothing, we're always looking for change or changing it up and, until it comes to our minds. Yeah. I don't know about you, but anybody, anybody, would you, would you, you'd like some change in your life, right? I mean, like, I mean, like, would you, anybody like to change anything about yourself on the outside? Yeah, we'd like to change some things, right? Or, or maybe somebody would like to change what kind of car they're driving or change what kind of house they're living in or change what kind of job, right? But all of that means nothing. Until you change on the inside. And when you change on the inside, it begins to manifest on the outside. Are you hearing me? And you, you, the, the truth of the matter is, is that you can dress up a pig in a suit and tie. And he's still a pig. It's not until you change what's on the inside of, of the suit. It's not until you change what's inside. It's not until you change what's going on in here that you're going to begin to... See the fruit of those things. And that's the real truth. Until it comes to, I, I, I mean, in, in America, we change spouses. You know, they say 75 to 80 percent of American marriages end in divorce, right? Something needs to change. Amen? Amen? Something needs to change. And I know that everybody here that's been through that, I know it was the other person's fault. Right? <laughs> Amen? Right? I know it's the other person's fault. Right? Yeah. You know what maturity is? Can I tell you what maturity is? I know that that uh, I know that those things. Man, you could be married to somebody that's that's uh, you know, just horrible. But there's things that are horrible in you too. Right. You can blame somebody for this and this and this. And if you're in an abusive relationship and all that, get the hell out. Yep. Don't yeah. be stupid. Yeah. But definitely don't marry another person like that. Right. Amen. Don't marry nobody until God tells you that's the one. Mm-hmm. And 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 I tell my daughters all the time, which some of them have made mistakes. Uh, except for Audra, she married Mikey, who's awesome. <laughs> Tinker, you know. No, just kidding. Just kidding. Just kidding. Mikey's not awesome. Okay. He's, uh, huh? Yeah. But uh. I, I tell, not just my daughters, I tell people all the time, or young men, you know, if you can't find somebody that's serving God, you don't want to be with them. Right? If they haven't been serving God for a while, yeah. right? Some, some of these young ladies go, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get me a guy and get him to go to church. He ain't going to change for you. Right? right? He ain't going to change for you. you got to get somebody that's already, and, and well, that's the one I want. Don't get that one. That, don't take the one you want. Take the one God wants you to have. Yeah. Right? Pick the one God wants you to have, guys. Don't 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 pick the one that you don't know how beautiful she. I'd rather have the ugly one. It's serving God. <laughs> Seriously, I'd rather. I'm, no, I'm just telling you, man. I mean, like, <laughs> my daughter Kelsey, she's she's got her mind made up. Here's my my daughter Kelsey. She wants she she wants the best of both worlds. Because I talk to her like. Oh, that's a nice guy. I'm like, well, yeah. I mean, so he's a little overweight or whatever. She's like, she wants, she wants Jesus in Paul Walker's body. Huh? Paul, Paul Walker, yeah. Matt looks like Paul Walker. You guys think that? Don't you guys think Matt looks like Paul Walker? Or not Paul Walker, Sean Michael Murray. John Murray. Chad. Chad Michael Murray. <laughs> right? I mean, you, <laughs> you say, well, you know, I was taught to name it, claim it, frame it. You don't have to settle for less. Man, you ain't settling for less when you get somebody with the right heart. Yeah. All right? And they need to have a job. Yes. You don't need to bury somebody that just got out of his way. 
You were still in his way when that happened, okay? <laughs> you understand what I'm saying, right? Come on. I mean, you know. I mean, my, my wife married a, a 18 year old kid that didn't have a job, couldn't keep a job, and all I cared about was hot rocks, right? So we ended up getting married, and we struggled, man. We struggled, and we struggled, and struggled, and struggled until we were getting divorced. And, 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 and God got a hold of both of us. And God put some things back together. But there had to be change. Yes. Right? It can't be the same. When I identify things in my life from my old nature, sometimes I identify it through that saying, that's the old you. <laughs> However, we have to identify that. <laughs> right? Sometimes we, we have to identify those things because that's not who we are. We're new creatures in Christ Jesus. And you can find out that, and, and, and my message is going along like this, that, uh, that when, why, the reason it was detrimental for Esau is because Esau had already given up his birthright. And some of you are giving up things that you are entitled to in your born again life. Yeah. To be the creature that God has created, a new creature in Christ Jesus. And yet you're giving that up for the old man. You're giving that up for things, and you're living your life out in that old nature. You're living it out in that old nature. And that old nature is producing fruit. And it's producing kids and grandkids. It's producing fruit around you. It's producing friends. It's producing fruit. You understand? And here's the thing about producing fruit. You can't repent for someone else's fruit. What someone else is. Even if you made them. You can only repent for you. Do you understand what I'm saying? If you make an apple... I'm sorry I made that apple. I'm so sorry. Well, God will forgive you. But the apple's still there. The apple's still rotten. And it's like, what can you do then? Then you pray for the apple. But the apple's convinced because of the way you created them. To, you, met, you know, they're like, well, it's so hard to get through because you haven't been... They haven't saw the change. They, are you hearing me? Yeah. In America, we change spouses, jobs, locations. Most of the time, we're looking for something to satisfy our flesh, right? And, and, and here's the thing about even a lot of Christians that, are on, that get the fire of God. They get the fire of God, but yet in due season, they grow weary, Right? They do they grow weary of discipline. They go they grow weary in chastisement. They grow weary in learning. They grow weary and they turn to their modus operandus. How many of you know what a modus operandus is? Right? A modus operandus is how they catch a lot of criminals because they do things a certain way, the same way every time. Right? We have forensics now. We have things that catch people that we're like, how in the world did they catch them? It's because they have a modus operandi. They do things a certain way. They may, they may talk and walk and act a certain way, live and talk and, and speak or, pro, or manifest a certain way. They do things in that modus operandi. Our method of functioning, who we are and how we think, stays a certain way. And unless we allow it to, unless we Ask the Lord to give us the power and we actually work on it. Amen? And you say, but yeah, the old man is dead. You know, the old nature is dead, but he's always trying to manifest. Right? I mean, like, you know how I know how true that is? This is how I know how true that is. I mean, I've been saved for 30-something years, raised in church. You know, I had my bout with drugs and alcohol and, and being a, you know, a, a a, a, re a rebellious young person and all that, but I've been saved and pastoring this church for 28 years, right? And and this is how quick the flesh can manifest. I had a kid tr about 25 years old that come by me 100 miles an hour, almost run me off the road, right? I was going like speed limit, which is not normal for me. <laughs> and then. Uh, he almost ran me off the road. Then he almost ran another car off the road. He was, you know, playing. That's what kids do. That's, that was me, 25 years old. He wasn't doing it on purpose. He was just being an idiot. We come up to the stoplight, right? And I roll the window down. I'm like, 
man, you need to you need to slow down. I've been there, you know. He goes, shut up, old man. I'm like, this old man to get out of here and whoop you right now. Huh? So true. You know why? Because we don't hurt the same. Right? When you're 25 years old and blood's gushing out of everything, you don't, you're like, hey, give me the hospital. When you're my age, it's like, keep, keep punching. Yeah, and that's how fast the flesh comes up. Because no, I should have just shut up. I should have just, there was no reason for me to, I'll get out of here and whoop you sideways. <laughs> that was stupid, right? It'd probably whoop me sideways. I'll come home all beat up. Let's go, what happened? I got in the flesh. Because <laughs> that's what happened when you get in the flesh. Some of you here today, you're all beat up right now. Yeah. No, seriously. Yeah. You're all beat up right now. You've allowed these last few months to beat you up. And the reason it's beating you up is because you ain't changed. You, you, you might have changed your eating habits because you can't sit down at in and out Burger anymore. <laughs> if I had to write down, how, has, how have you changed? Not what has changed. How have you changed? How have you changed? I changed by... Taking back my birthright of who I am in Christ. Let me say this clear. Nothing in your life will stay changed until you change your mind. I heard T.D. Jakes say, a changed mind is the most powerful thing on earth. Are you hearing me? A changed mind is the most powerful thing on earth. There is nothing more powerful than a changed mind. There's nothing more powerful than a changed mind. A changed mind will not have the same things happen over and over and over again. A changed mind is no longer a thief, no longer a robber, hello, no longer a hypocrite. Are you hearing me? Is no longer bound. Is no are you listening? A changed mind. Here in the Hebrews 12, the Bible is telling us that we are being instructed by God. This is a scripture that lets us know that God is a good, good father. And that God, he has expectations for us. And if there's something happening in the world, God still has expectations for you. And in a bad situation, God has expectations for you. God expects you to grow and change. And he expects you to rise to the occasion. God expects you to get faithful. God doesn't expect you to be like the rest of the world. He doesn't expect you to draw back. He doesn't expect you to give up or give in. God expects you to rise to the occasion. God expects you to overcome the circumstances. God expects you. He's empowered you. He's furnished you. You understand? You don't just continue playing life. Because one day you're going to breathe your last breath and like Esau. There was no repentance for him. This scripture is clear. Here's the thing to understand. If chastisement doesn't bring change, then judgment will. Amen. Amen. Hello. Yeah. Lord, what do I have to preach? Can I preach like the tutti frutti good make you feel good thing? No. Can I be one of those preachers like, it's your day for a mirror. <laughs> This is your day for a miracle. Yeah. Come on. Right. Yes. Amen. Yes. yes. If we don't get it through all of our heart, if we don't get it through trials, if we don't get it through troubles, if we don't get it through chastisement, if we don't get it through persecution, if we don't get it through what's happening around us, if that doesn't change, if that doesn't cause you to change your mind, no chastisement for the present seemeth to be fun. But grievous, nevertheless, afterwards, it yields peaceable fruit. You're just going to keep going through it until you find the peaceable fruit. Until the right fruit manifests. Peaceable fruit. Peaceable fruit. It's time for you to change. And, and quit trying to change everyone around you. My marriage would be a lot better if something Beth would change. 
Hello? My life would be a lot better if everyone around me would change. Some people just aren't getting it, it's, it's, and it's time. It's time. But the, the fruit is showing up. See, here's the thing. Here's the thing. The fruit, you should know them by their fruits. The fruit's showing up. You understand? Yeah. And I ain't talking about just good. Yeah, I ain't talking about good fruit. Right. All. I'm talking about all fruit. We fight and fight and we fight for our lives and our rights and our privileges and we fight for our way. And then we continue to see the fruit of our wrong minds and we just fight more. It's like a, a drowning victim. The flesh doesn't want to yield. The flesh doesn't want to die. And the reason you're having a, such a hard time converting or changing or, or crucifying that area of your life is because the flesh doesn't want to die. It's, it's, a, it's like a drowning victim. A drowning victim will drown you. It's true. If somebody's drowning, you've got to be careful when you get in there and say, well, because they'll drown you. Seriously. I've seen it. I've been involved in it, man. I've saved people before. They almost drowned me. You know how I did it? That's exactly right, Brother Thomas. I grabbed them by the hair. I saved them. Because you can't get too close. They panic. Well, I tried. I did get close. They were climbing on top of me. They panicked. Then I wanted to punch them in the face. That might have worked. Huh. No, that's true. That's, that's, that's how our flesh is. That's how we are. When the flesh, when you're crucifying the flesh, it's dying and it's fighting against you. There's an internal battle going on and it's fighting against you and you don't know why. And frustration and, and, and all these things, these emotions begin to rise up. Things that aren't normal for Christians. It's normal for the flesh. It's like that, you know, they don't want to drown you. Somebody say consequences. consequences. You have a birthright as a born-again believer. But like Esau, many have sold out their birthright for a morsel of this world. And because of that, your fruit is worldly. Amen? You say, well, that was in my past. I hope so. Right? Right? I hope so. And I hope that now you're producing fruit that will actually begin to help change that fruit. Are you listening? I hope that you're producing fruit in your life that will begin to manifest in other fruit. Right? Because faith is transferable. Right? The power of God is transferable. What do you mean by that? It's like if we all begin to worship God, the faith begins to arise. It begins to go from person to person. The joy of the Lord begins to go from person to person. Right? It begins to just the Holy Spirit, the anointing. It begins to go from person to person. Deliverance. That's why when you when, when Jacob oh, starts dancing over here and Gabriel starts dancing over here, Mike, Pastor Mike starts dancing over here. And, Christmas starts dancing back there, right? Are you hearing me? A little yeah. bit of just worship. It begins to pretty soon people are fighting. Yeah. yeah. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> we go from this to right. right? Pretty soon we're doing the, the, the floss of Jesus. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what the, how you do the floss. It's hard, huh? You gotta be coordinated. I do it like this. <laughs> yeah, Braxton knows how to do it. Cash. Cash got like rubber arms, he could do it. The problem with see, some people have have run from change for years, believing that God's grace has it all covered for them. And, you know, grace covers a multitude of sins. And it's all, you know, and, and, and here's the thing. Here's the thing about that. I have no doubts. I'm not checking, putting you in check about your salvation. I'm just putting you in check about what you're bearing. Right. How you're living. Amen? Because my life has way more to do with others' lives than it does mine. Yeah. That's the truth. Sure. I have but one life. But I impact hundreds. Mm -hmm. Right? Yes. 
from my immediate family to the church to the people you're around. And, and that's why we have to work on change in ourselves. Because God's grace might get you into heaven someday, but the fruit you've produced might be foul. So God has a, a good, he's a good, good father, and he continues to allow chastisement and trials to come, hoping that you will grow up, hoping that you'll work on you. Amen? I'm not going to allow the last five months to just be like, okay, we had a pandemic. Now it's over. We're back to normal. No. Man, I've changed. God's done a lot in my heart. God's done a lot in my spirit. God's matured me up in areas. Right? I mean, like, I was always kind of a hard guy to get offended. I didn't really get I've been pastoring a long time, so it's, you know, usually to offend me, you got to do something against the ministry. Get it? I mean, like, you can say what you want to say I'm pretty, I'm pretty like confident in who I am in the Lord. So they, you're just a stupid fat guy. You don't preach good. I'm like, I don't care. That. <laughs> That's your opinion. <laughs> right? <laughs> I don't care what you think. Seriously. It's like, you've got to get to a point where you don't care what people think. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. But you also have to realize that you are, you carry people's lives in your hands. Right. So you can't just get up and say what you want to say. I learned a long time ago that, you, you know, you can't get up and say what you want to say because then, you know, you're going to run off the church bouncers. You know what church bouncers are, right? Yeah. It's like when this, when this one here, when this, when they, when God finally deals with them about something here, they go find another one where God's not dealing with them. And then when they, you know, God starts dealing with them there, they leave that one, go to another one where God's did, you know, and then they, they can stay there for a while until God deals with them. And the minute God starts dealing with them, like, you know what, I hate this church. I don't like the way they're feeling. I don't like the music. I don't like what they're I, I, you know what? They just do the same song last Sunday. Get out of here. Gabriel always sits on the front row. <laughs> Can't go to that church no more. <laughs> Familiarity breeds contempt. Yeah. Yeah. Right? So we, we get offended or bitter or, or resent. You know, anybody ever read the book, The Bait of Satan? There's a book called The Bait of Satan. You need to read it. It's all about offense. Like, Logan, I'm offended you're wearing that mask. How can you hear me wearing that mask? All right. How can you hear me with that mask on? Right? I mean, like people, people offense. Isn't that stupid? You know what offense does? It builds offense. It causes division. And then it causes bitterness. Because I started out talking about how offense works. In the very beginning of this message, I said how it works is you get offended. Then your husband gets offended. Then your kids get offended. Amen? Yeah. Then, 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 you, then you go over here and tell Marty, Marty, I'm offended at, I'm offended at, at I'm offended at your sister. <laughs> and Marty's like, well, because you're offended, I'm offended. <laughs> I can't believe that. Get over it. Get over it. Get over it. <laughs> Get it? That's how offense works. Yeah. Because we're in mature areas of our life. And then it causes bitterness. And the Bible says, beware lest the root of bitterness springs up, defiles people around you. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And then we become resentful. Because we, 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 because we're offended, we think we deserve something. Like, well, you know, I won't be offended if you apologize. Well, well you shouldn't have got offended in the first place. Seriously, be mature. You don't have to get offended. You got offended. You don't have to get offended. The only reason you got offended is because there's something there. Hello. That's the truth. Strongholds of pride and self-will and self-want. If you ever get a chance, I want, listen, if you ever get a chance to study the Bible, read the book of Proverbs chapter 29, verse 1, where the Bible says, He being often reproved that stiffeneth his neck, right? He being often reproved and still won't change, will suddenly be broken beyond healing. Hello? I think that all Christians need to do a study on being humble, man. Amen? On just humbling themselves. For some reason in our minds, we still belong to us. And we don't belong to God. And we're supposed to belong to God. And if somebody says something about 
somebody that belongs to God, they're talking about God's child, and that's on them. Amen? I belong to the Lord. What you say about me? Man, you can say, listen, you can go around saying, I'm a, a scallywag, you know, that I'm an outlaw, that I'm a hypocrite. You can go around saying what you want to say. It ain't going to impact me at all because I'm a child of God and I know who I belong to. You ain't talking about me. You're talking about a child of God. Are you hearing me? I don't even take offense to it. Maybe it's all the years in the ministry have had so many people say this and say that and do this and do that and come here and go there. and It's like it rolls off my back. Huh? Not my issue. Really? It's not my issue. Let me clarify something. Are you ready? Am I preaching too long? No. My mind, my mind, the, the things that I battle in my life manifest through my fruit. Every seed bear fruit, and they manifest them after. What you don't change in you will come out in your fruit. Yeah. And I ain't just talking about offspring. I'm talking about your fruit in your life all around you. Your finances. I told my nephew the other night, we, were, we had a birthday party for Mikey. We were talking about tithing and offerings. And he was teasing about tithing and offering. And he's talking about somebody that don't tithe. They said, don't bring them over to my house. He goes, why not? I go, because they'll steal from me. If they'll steal from God, they'll steal from me. Right? If people are not... Hey, listen. The book of Malachi says, What? You are, you have robbed me. The word rob, study that. You have robbed me. How have we robbed you, Lord? In tithe and offerings. Now, so if you'll steal from God, you would. I mean, you say you won't. You say, I'm not that way. Yet, but you also say you believe in God. Right. You also say you believe in the word, but yet you rob God. So <laughs> yeah. you would get nervous. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not taking an offering. I'm just telling you what I believe. Right. You don't tithe, it's on you. Yep. You don't tithe. If you don't tithe, our food bank is going to be opening up. Right. Amen. Come and get some food. You're going to need it. Thing I want you to think about. Sometimes we see chastisement as the enemy, right? And and and, and listen. Anybody ever, ever, anybody ever been under intense pressure, and like later on you found out it wasn't. There have been times when I was under chastisement from the Lord, and I was rebuking it. I was like, yeah, I rebuke it in the name of Jesus, and I was fasting, I'm fasting, man. This stinking devil's got to leave, you know. And I was, in, and come to find out, it was God. It was God. It was God saying and doing something. And, and here's the thing about God. You can rebuke the devil, but you can't rebuke God. If you're going through something and, it ain't, and you've got the power of God in your life and you keep rebuking and it ain't letting up, you better take it to God and say, Lord, is that you? Because yeah, I've been trying to, huh? That makes sense, don't it? Y'all just like, ding. <laughs> When God is trying to get your attention and orchestrate change in you as a voluntary surrender, and you can't, you know, you can't rebuke it. You can't. You can't rebuke it. You can't rebuke what God is doing or even allowing. So listen to me. You can drink anointing oil. You can fast. You can lay on your face before the altar of the Lord. You can cry out. But if God is chastising you and putting you through something so that you'll change, you ain't getting out of it. You ain't going to pray your way out of it. All you can do is get delivered. Yes. Amen. 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 Take it from experience. Yeah. I blame the devil for a lot of things God put me through. It's like, it's what Jordana told me, quit blaming the devil when God is orchestrating something. Now, I ain't saying that God is doing bad things. You'll get it. Yeah. Nothing will change until you change. For those of you who haven't really changed, just your situation has changed. You need to understand something. Pastor Mike's famous line, nothing will change until you change. Mm -hmm. 
Get ready because you will reap a harvest of your pride and rebellion. Or you'll reap a harvest of your humility. Yeah. How much you would allow God to work in your life. Yield. That's how easy it works. I'm closing. That's how easy it works. Yield. Surrender. Who, 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 who posted the thing the other day to make sure they put their brain in gear before they engage their mouth? Come on. Right? Well, I take it a step further. Make sure you put the Holy Spirit in gear before you engage your mouth. Make, for, make sure you take it to the Lord before you make a move on it. Make sure that you're seeking God. Make sure that you're right. Make sure that your motives are right. Get rid of that sense of entitlement that's going around. Father, in the name of Jesus, come on. Come on right now. Get ready. Get ready. Get ready. First off, I'm going to challenge you to do something. I want you to go home and I want you to write down on a piece of paper how you've changed in the last five months. Hey, I know two people say, well, I'm pregnant. <laughs> My stomach's much bigger. You know what? So is mine and I'm not pregnant. So. Amen. Shut your mouth. <laughs> I'm talking about how you've changed. How you have how you have you grown? Come on. How have you grown? I mean, like, that's how we do it, right? We put ourselves in check. How have you grown? How have you grown? How have I grown through all of this? Why why am I looking at all this and I'm waiting for it? I want it to be over. Anybody want this thing to be over? But has it done its purpose in your life? Huh? I mean, like. Have you spent enough time in the cave? Because I know everybody's excited to get out of the cave, but what did you do in the cave? Because I know David built an army. David got up in that cave. I read it to you last week. David got up in that cave and got a few faithful men, and he began to build up men of valor and honor. Amen. What did you do? I ate donuts. <laughs> right? What did you do? Now, when we weren't able to come into the building, we never stopped having church. And we never stopped being in the church. The church is not the building. I'll be honest with you, I totally dig the drive-up thing. That was an idea that Bishop Filkey and I had back in the 80s. Really? We said, you know what we ought to do? We ought to have a drive-up church. Like where you have the speaker, you know, and you drive up. And then we, we he said, well, and then we, we, then we started jesting with it. We were serious about it. And then we started jesting. He goes, how do we pray for people? He goes, you know how they have those arms that come down? Like when you go in and out? We'll make it rubber. When people drive by, it slaps their car. <laughs> <laughs> now, you think that's funny. but I mean, it is funny, but how have you changed? I'm a better Christian. I'm a stronger Christian. I'm a more humble Christian. The Lord is hard to be humble when you're perfect in every way. That's the old song, right? Yeah. I'm a better mother, better father. Right? I'm more committed. I'm more faithful. Um, if there was any time to run to God, it would be during a pandemic. Amen. Right? Some Amen. people have done everything they can to make it a vacation. Yes, but that's not it. Spend more time at the lake than you do with Jesus. And I have nothing wrong with going to the lake. I'm going to the ocean this week. But can I tell you something? Jesus is going to be there with me. Amen. 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 And I'll be on duty. I don't go off duty. Ready in season and out of season. Amen. So how have you changed? How have you changed from last week? Some of y'all don't even remember what the word was last week until I brought up David being in the cave. Like, what? Yeah. I know Jacob was listening because he, he texted me. He goes, man, tell them they'll just slip off. Come on. Come on. It's a couple weeks, right? Slip off. Yeah. You got to tell them to slip off. Try to get in your, your mind, your head, tell them to slip off. 
when you identify things in yourself, tell it to slip off too. Yeah. It's not who I am anymore. Yeah. And then you can start setting goals, right? I press toward the mark. So you set some goals. Say, what is the goals? I don't know. What are they? What are the goals? I'm not talking, well, I'm going to make more money next year. No, 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 no. What are your goals spiritually? I'm going to be closer to the Lord. I'm going to learn to pray the prayer of faith. How about I'm going to learn to worship? Because you know what I can tell you? Honestly, this worship team is one of the most awesome worship teams I've ever experienced. Thank you, Lord. Some of y'all don't know how to worship. And if you can't worship with this worship team, God forbid you go to a place where there is no anointing. There's no reason why people shouldn't be on their faces, man. Don't get on your face because I said that. I'm just saying there's no reason why people shouldn't be swaying with the Holy Spirit. Breathing in the breath of God. Just worshiping. Say, well, I don't, I don't, that's not me. Well, that's not who you were. But maybe that can be, maybe that's what God, maybe that's why God brought you to this church so that you can worship like that. Think about that? Wow. Maybe that's part of your change. If you ever get a chance to talk to my bishop about me, I was at the altar call every time I, was, I worshiped and I because I wanted it. I was hungry. I was hungry. I had to have everything God had. There was no shame in my game. I had already lost everything. Yeah. I had no wife and kids no more. It was just me and God. I didn't care what people thought. I didn't listen, I had lost all kinds of weight and all my clothes were about four sizes too big, and I had to buckle my pants way up here with a belt. They, I wore size, like, 38 pants, and I went down to, like, size 30 pants, and I just took a belt and buckled them around. I think I had the original baggies. <laughs> come on, brother. I'd come in all paint all over me. I got a job painting houses. I'd paint all over me. You can see where I'd been wearing a mask to paint, and had, everything was painted in a cap, and I'd be at the altar crying out, worshiping God. Amen. And, and because I needed change. Yeah. And I didn't know how to do it. You understand? Yeah. I was crying out, God, I need it. I, I have to have you. I have to have all of you. I don't know how to do this. I don't know how to do this. And God began to instruct me. And that's why this word right here is a word of instruction. Yeah. I begin to find myself in here. I begin to find myself in the Word of God. I begin to find my identity Come on. Yeah. in here. Yeah. So that's who I'm supposed to be. So that's how I'm supposed to live. So that's how I'm supposed to be. So that, oh, I, okay, so that means i got to stop all this and be that. That means i got to do the things I don't want to do and not do the things I do want to do. Yeah. Wage war with the flesh. Wage war with the flesh. Come on, it gets easier because you move from sacrifice to obedience. There's pleasure in obedience. I want to do it now. Amen? I want to do it. I told the church back in the late 80s that time was speeding up. That I believe that God only created so much time. See, I am old enough to remember when there was, you know, one person in the family worked, or if there was only one person, that, you know, sometimes there was divorce and things, but when one person in the family worked, the other would raise the kids and educate the kids, and they would make sure the school system was doing things right and all this kind of stuff, and I remember that God showing me that it was going to come a time when the time was going to speed up, and it was going to speed up, and now, I mean, if you look at culture now it takes two two people have to work sometimes the kids got to go to work because they can't even make the house payment everybody got to work just to pay one payment i don't know how people pay like three thousand dollars a month for a house nine hundred dollars a month for a car payment or two car payments i don't know how they pay insurance health insurance all, i don't know because they both have to work but they neglect everything the spiritual side of it that's the enemy's plan. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. And he's in time is speeding up. And he knew if he could get us like that, if he knew that the money's better over there, that we'd drive three hours to get it, right? He knew that if we, he knew that we would and drive three hours back. He knew that if he could, he knew. 
and he orchestrated the situations and the circumstances to where we had to have a certain lifestyle and we were willing to sacrifice for it. But in the long run, what you've sacrificed, everything. God would have gave you anyway. Everything that, everything that you think you have to have, God would have given you the desires of your heart. Anyway, better. Everything that God has given me has always been better than what I could imagine. Amen? Yeah. Seriously. Better than what I could imagine. Better than what I could have provided for myself. I ain't saying don't work. I'm saying work. But make sure that you don't neglect the, the weightier things. Amen? Yeah. That's what Jesus said to those Pharisees. They're like, this and this and this and this. He goes, yeah, well, you know, you guys, you guys neglect the weight of your things. Like love. Huh? Like being faithful. Those are the weight of your things. You neglect those things. And then your fruit manifests what you've neglected. Are you hearing me? Yeah. So what are we going to do about it? Well, I'm like Ronald Reagan. I believe in the trickle-down effect. You know what that means? It all starts with me. Right. Amen? I can't ask you to change if I'm not willing to change. And if I change first, I believe that y'all will begin to get it. If, I, if you change, then boys will change. Amen? If, 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 if I change, then Pastor Beth begins to change, then my family begins to change, and the church begins to change. If, if Are you hearing me? It works like that. If you get faithful, then faith will be part of your fruit. Faithfulness will begin to manifest around you. Amen? Amen. God's a good God. He's a good Father. And He continues to give us instruction. So, I pray that God just can continually begins to just continually pour into you. Pour into your heart and mind and make you aware of the things that you need to work on in your own lives so that you can walk victoriously every day. So that you can be exactly what God called you to be and do exactly what God called you to do and go where God called you to go. Say what God called you to say. So that you can be, so that you can trust. You can put your trust in no matter what the circumstance looks like, you already know what seed you've sown. Wow. Amen. Amen? Oh, I know what it looks like, but I know the seeds that I have sown. My trust is in God. Yes. Yes. Amen? The enemy tried to get you to look at the circumstance. Oh, I know what it looks like now, but I put my faith in God. Yeah. These seeds were planted a long time ago. The Bible says, raise up a child in the way that he should go, and when he's old, he will not depart from it. Yes. You planted some seeds. Yes. You have to trust God. May not look that way now. Man, my mom probably was so like, my God, what I must have put her through as a young man. <clears throat> but now she thinks I'm wonderful. She told you. <laughs> she said it right here just a few minutes ago. She thinks, she thinks I'm wonderful. She don't have to live with me. <laughs> Amen. So go home today, by this evening, take a few minutes, and I want you to write down what's changed in you in the last five months. Good, bad. What has changed? Well, I've become much more prideful. I've become much more greedy. And write it all down. I've become a lot more generous. I've become a lot kinder. Right? Well, I get offended a lot easier. Well, I'm frustrated all the time. How about, I notice that I'm, I care more about people right now because of everything that's going on. I notice that I, I want to help. Just write down what's changed in you. Some people say, well, I've always been greedy, so it hasn't changed. No, just write down what's changed in you and look at it and say, okay, I need to work on that and that and that. Or if it's good things, continue it. Amen? Continue it. Let God continue doing the work in you. Can you say amen? Amen. I mean, you with me? Yes. Stretch your hands forth.
Yes. All right, come on, pray. Stretch your hands that way. Let's begin to pray right now. Come on, everybody begin to pray. Come on, begin to pray in the name of Jesus. Come on, we're not praying. We're not just praying. We're praying in the name of Jesus, man. Come on.